After a year apart, Camilla is back to the Italian town of Amalfi from Canada to meet her boyfriend, Vincenzo. As their relationship is tested because of his visual impairment and her future dreams, they realize much more about each other. Vince's mother Irene is always worried about him arriving safely. She discusses his plans to pick up his girlfriend Camilla from the airport. Vince is more concerned about her since this is the first trip she's taking with a man in a long time. Lucio thinks her son is right and this trip will be an opportunity for them to discover where their relationship stands. He knows she's only worried because he is vacationing without her for the first time, and she's not used to letting things go. They are supposed to go to Sicily, but Lucio takes an unexpected detour for her to Amalfi. He claims he isn't big on planned vacations, but she knows he did it so Vince can be closer to her. Camilla arrives at the airport for her summer trip with her roommate Natalie who is visiting Italy for the first time and is worried about being so far away from home without even a boyfriend. Camilla thinks she has been away from Vince for too long and is afraid things might have changed between them. Vince is too excited to meet her and keeps asking Furio if he can spot her. He wants to ask her to live with him, but Furio feels cohabitation destroys relationships, and he should think about that again. Vince is sure, because he has never met a girl like Camilla, and knows this vacation will help them get closer. Camilla finally finds him and introduces them to Natalie. She tries to be polite but Furio gets a little creepy and awkward with her about appreciating Italian boys, now that she has come for the first time to observe Italian culture. When they get off from their boat, Natalie jokes about wanting pineapple on her pizza which offends Furio exactly like she intended. Vince shows them his dad's beautiful place and while Natalie and Camilla enjoy the view, Furio asks if his dad can adopt him. They come across a weird painting and a cabinet with a very expensive golden crab. Vince asks them not to touch it but Furio already beats him to it. Natalie doesn't like that she has to share a room with Furio and threatens him about peeping when she's changing. Vince shows Camilla around and introduces her to his friend Salvador who thinks she is very pretty, but also very lucky to be dating Vince. They also meet another woman who calls her husband, Jenna, to greet Vince and his girlfriend. He takes her shopping where she finds a beautiful dress she can wear that night. Lucio and Irene can't find any room in Amalfi and decide to spend the night in the car. She remembers that she slept in a car for the first time in her 90s. Lucio also remembers his first time in Corsica, when he was 20 years old with his girlfriend Paola. When she asks why he still remembers her name, he points out he was just the same age as Vince is now. She doesn't want to think about her little boy all grown up and sharing a bed with Camilla. Natalie wonders why Furio always has a lifeguard whistle around his neck. He explains that his dad and grandfather passed it to the next generation after they found their partners while wearing it. After a while, Furio notices a creepy guy staring at him but it turns out to be Vince's old friend Hans, who spends every summer with him, so he introduces him to everyone. Furio takes Vince to the stage so he can perform a song he has been listening to all year, when he was away from Camilla. When he starts singing, Furio makes sure to let the crowd know which girl he is dedicating the song to. Furio doesn't understand what's wrong with his social media and when Hans takes a look, he points out that he has no swag. Furio went on one date with a woman, which is also his longest relationship, who said the same thing to him. He claims he has never been loved but thinks he has a lot of love to give, especially when he watches Rebecca at the party. Hans points out how impossible it is to get Rebecca since everyone wants her, but she doesn't care about anyone. Irene and Lucio decide to stay with Bridget and Amalfi, who is Hans' mother and their old friend. Irene clarifies that she doesn't want Vince to know she's there, which is why she isn't staying at her husband's place. When Irene learns Hans is in Cala Venresca with Vince, she gets paranoid since the place has a very rocky road to the beach. Camilla helps Vince down the road as Hans tries to make Natalie more familiar with Italian words. Camilla doesn't think they should just dive in since there are rocks, but Vince knows the water is clear. She doesn't want him to take this risk but he jumps in and claims he wants to have every kind of experience with her. Furio teases Natalie about not taking off her shirt on the beach and Hans notices how uncomfortable she is. He puts his own shirt back on and scares Furio about the possibility of jellyfish there. As Furio tries to get to the land, Natalie is touched by Hans' gesture and agrees to dive in with him. Camilla tells Natalie about getting a job as a teaching assistant, which also means she has to spend one more year in Canada. Natalie doesn't think she should let an opportunity like this go, but Camilla knows it might mess things up with Vince. Bridget's husband, David, brags about the place and shares how Bridget made him feel less like a nomad. He remembers the summer when he met her, which is also the same year they met Irene and Vince's dad Roberto. Bridget and Irene discuss how grown up Vince is now when he and Hans used to run around as clingy kids, and Roberto scolded them. Lucio compliments the house, but gets irritated again when they bring Roberto in the conversation again, and remember how he helped them renovate this house. Natalie is feeling conscious about her stretch marks and doesn't let Furio come into the room before their party. She wonders how Camilla manages to walk in high heels and feels like she needs to buy some sandals from that market. As they watch a puppet show, Furio is grateful to Hans for transforming his social media, and loves him more when he notices Rebecca has finally accepted his request. 
He needs a good pickup lines to impress her, but Hans reminds him that whatever he says needs to stand out because hundreds of guys message her regularly. When he wants to convey that he would like to be her children's father, Hans asks him to sleep on it. Hans hears Natalie struggling with the photographer and goes to rescue her. He doesn't let him take a photo of her alone and when the photographer gives it to them, Natalie pockets it and claims it's blurred. Vince and Camilla cross a fortune teller and while he's sure it's a waste of time, Camilla thinks it might be fun to read their cards. She thinks a huge change is coming in their relationship and they're likely to be very far apart in a few months. While Vince jokes about her discussing the past and not the future, Camilla feels guilty about hiding her Canada job offer from him. Furio finds the photo Natalie was hiding and asks if she likes him. She reveals she had a boyfriend who was about to come with her to this trip, but her love story gets very sad after that. He gives her a tight hug and asks if she would date him if she were Rebecca. She tries to be a little nice to him but asks him not to get used to it. Vince has taken a job at a call center and knows he can afford a place now. When he asks if Camilla wants to move in with him next month, she claims it'll be amazing. Natalie gets out of her room because Furio suggested they should sleep together since it's cold. She finds Camilla and jokes about Furio having too much love to give. She also assures Camilla that things will work out. Natalie checks out Furio's latest photo on social media, claiming Vince's house is his family home, and doesn't think he needs to impress Rebecca with so much fakeness. Camilla is panicking because Vince has been missing for an hour and even left his phone at home. While Furio thinks he must be fine, Camilla and Natalie decide to go out and find him. Lucio is happy about waking up next to Irene and asks if she wants to move in with him, now that Vince is independent too. He thinks he gets surprised by her every day and wants to be with her. She gets a call from Camilla, claiming that they can't find Vince anywhere. In her panic, she reveals that she's in Amalfi and is coming over to join them. They decide to split up to look for him, and they finally find him walking around. He's upset about Irene turning up there and gets more irritated when Camilla tells him how worried she was. He feels like there was no need to look for him and hands over some flowers that were supposed to be a surprise for her. Vince is frustrated about how everyone treats him like a child and feels bad he can't even have a vacation without people worrying about him. He expects this behavior from his mother but he thinks Camilla should at least trust him and not be on the edge about him all the time. Furio tries to make him understand that he too took a while before he knew how he needs to act around Vince, and feels like he needs to give some time to Camilla too. When he suggests he can make dinner for her when they all head out that night, Vince loves the idea and starts preparing a meal for her. Natalie tries different clothes but struggles to find something that completely hides her stretch marks. Furio thinks he has finally transformed into the man women will desire, but soon admits he looks awful in leopard print. When Hans finally finds something suitable for him, they all head out to the party. Furio wants some excuse to talk to Rebecca and asks for Natalie's phone, since it closely resembles a rich person's phone. Hans takes her to the dance floor while Furio fails to catch Rebecca's attention, who completely ignores him when he calls out to her. Camilla finally wants to share something important at their quiet dinner, but hears people singing, and finds out that Furio and the other brought the whole club to wish him on his birthday. Hans is excited about Natalie trying a cake but ends up throwing it on her clothes. She thinks of it as a cake war and happily retaliates. Furio rants about not having a girl or a job, but Vince assures him they will figure it out together. When Hans throws water at Natalie, she fights back but ends up in the hot tub. He kisses her but she stops to pull him inside with her so they can continue. Everyone is passed out when Roberto makes a surprise entry to wish Vince on his birthday. Irene and Lucio bring shoes for Vince and when it's Roberto's turn, he claims he's trying to make up for being a terrible father. Vince is excited about the gift but it turns out to be smart glasses, so he can sense colors among other things like people with vision do. This makes things more awkward so Roberto offers to take them for a ride on his boat. Furio teaches Vince how to navigate since he's basically just going ahead and not doing anything. Roberto toasts to Vince's birthday and asks him to give a speech. While Vince toasts to all the trains that take people to unexpected places, Hans wants to make a special toast for Furio since Rebecca has finally agreed to see him. When he learns she's joining them for dinner that night, Furio dives into the sea in excitement. Camilla notices an awkward look between Natalie and Hans, and asks her about it. She saw them next to the hot tub and knows they kissed, but Natalie feels like it was probably a random kiss that doesn't mean anything to Hans. Furio asks for Natalie's opinion on how he looks before meeting Rebecca. She remembers the whistle he used to carry and thought it was cute because he cared about it. She feels bad he gave away a lucky charm for someone who doesn't care about him. Furio tries to brag about having a yacht in front of Rebecca, and also ends up mentioning he's friends with Giorgio Armani. Rebecca is finally interested and asks if he can call him over. Natalie is still pissed with him, so even she insists it would be great if they could hang out in his pool. When he claims his phone's battery is empty, everyone loses interest. Rebecca gets a call from someone who sounds like a partner and claims she needs to leave for another dinner. Furio follows her and tries to invite her for biking the next morning but she's distracted and asks if he can pay for his sushi. Furio feels it took less than an hour for Rebecca to know him and dump him. Hans needs to head to someone's party too and asks Natalie to meet him at midnight. 
She keeps waiting for him to turn up but only Furio does, who thinks Hans is not right for her. Furio decides to look nice for Rebecca the next day and is nervous when she actually joins them. He wants Natalie to come along too, but Camilla reminds her that Vince wants to catch up later, and he can't ride a bike. Natalie reminds her that she shouldn't stop having fun, and they ask Hans to arrange for more bikes for them. While Natalie and Camilla stop for water, Furio tries to talk to Rebecca about the weather. But she just hands him her bag to carry to avoid tan lines. Natalie knows Camilla hasn't told Vince about the job yet, but she's just waiting for the right moment. Irene thinks they should spend the day with Vince and Roberto but Lucio feels uncomfortable, and claims he is meeting a friend who's also there on vacation. Vince feels strange drinking with his parents and when Irene excuses herself, he asks why Roberto left them. Roberto claims he was afraid to be a terrible father but Vince knows his life is much tougher, but he still doesn't give up. While everyone is swimming, Natalie and Furio stay back and she shows him some old photos. She explains that she lost 20 kilos in 3 months, but still doesn't feel better. She feels more people notice her now but it doesn't matter because like her ex who cheated on her, and left, they also don't care. She shows him her stretch marks and reveals how she's still trying to deal with her past. Furio feels like her old self must be much less bitchy than her and asks for her number. Irene calls Lucio so he can join them, but he claims to be busy with a friend when he's just sitting alone. He overhears Roberto brining her more wine and them having a good time. Vince wants Camilla to join him and his father for sailing but she lies about being busy with shopping and asks him to meet directly at the house. Rebecca asks Furio to take a picture of her and gives out too many instructions in the process. She still finally hates it which makes him irritated and he gives her everything back. He feels bad about always falling for bitchy girls and feels like he has done everything to impress her for nothing. When she leaves, Natalie is proud of Furio for standing up for himself, but Hans is just worried this will mess up their chances at Rebecca's party the next day. When Natalie calls him selfish, Hans claims he can't fix her issues just because the kiss meant more to her than it did to him. Irene is very drunk when she gets back and tries to discuss her day with Lucio, but he's not in the house. Vince knows Rebecca did something to Furio and offers to take him for a walk. He makes Furio wear the smart glasses his dad got so he can shut his eyes and focus on other things. When Furio isn't able to, Vince reminds him that he has always been obsessing over the wrong girls. He wants him to try a different strategy so he can try finding a girl from her voice and not her appearance. When they cross someone, Vince wonders if he heard her voice. He explains how easy it is to tell if a woman is insecure, happy or reliable just from her voice. Bridget finds them there and asks Vince to let Camilla know she can keep Han's bike. Vince is angry she hid the part about the bike from him. She knows he would have felt bad, which is why she didn't mention it. He just wants them to be honest with each other even if she thinks something will hurt him because that's the only way he knows their relationship will work. Camilla knows she has to be honest too and finally tells him about the assistant professor job. She explains that she kept wanting to tell him, but he had planned their whole life for them based on the job his mom got for him and forgot to ask her what she wants in her life. He thinks she wants to remain unattached but for her, it just feels like she doesn't want her whole life planned out. He just wants her to admit this is not about them moving in together, but more about her being scared of being with him. Natalie is rehearsing what she'll say to Hans about their kiss when Bridget overhears her and offers to make coffee for her as she waits for Hans. She notices a torn photo of Hans in the house and Bridget explains that he had a girlfriend he met during the summer and moved to Berlin with her. They were happy till she randomly left him one day because their summer love fizzled out for her. Since then, Hans doesn't let anyone get close to him in the summer and feels like everything is a scam. But she explains how her marriage started off as a summer fling too, and is still going strong after 20 years. Vince feels like he's at a crossroads with Camilla, and so does Lucio with Irene. Lucio explains that he took a detour to Amalfi because he wanted to ask Irene to marry him with Vince present. But he feels like there's a lot of tension between them now, and even Vince feels frustrated that no one trusts him. Camilla talks to Irene about their relationship, and Irene understands why she wants to follow her dreams. Irene has given up a lot of things for Vince, but she knows she has no other choice as a mother. But she still knows it'll be tough for Camilla to stay with Vince, and wants her to know that he suffered a lot when his father left and if Camilla also decides one day that she can't do it, he won't be able to take it. She knows if Vince doesn't think she trusts him, it will not work out with them. When their phones buzz, they realize Vince and Lucio are going diving together. Lucio brings Vince in the middle of the sea, where he feels like he's having the time of his life. Before they go in, Lucio gives him all the instructions and informs him about the depth of the water. He knows everyone including Irene will think this is dangerous, but Vince knows that's why he needs to do it. They decide to go for a backflip and with Lucio's help, Vince gets a proper feel of everything at the bottom of the sea. Vince had an amazing experience and feels very calm about the beautiful silence he felt. Irene comes rushing with Roberto to find them and feels like what Lucio did was reckless, even if he and Vince assure her that everything went great. She points out he's not his dad and it's not up to him to decide what's good for him. 
She thinks he especially shouldn't have done it after knowing how much she worries about Vince. When Roberto also scolds Lucio for being irresponsible, he walks away while Vince tries to stand up for them. He is tired of them treating him like a child and not letting him decide what he wants to do with his life. He also taunts his dad for giving him an insensitive gift, like the smart glasses, to remind him of what he's missing out on. He thinks Roberto has never accepted that he's blind and his gifts only remind him of it. Vince sends Camilla a message about how free he feels that day and has realized how important her freedom is. He wants her to take the job in Canada and not worry about him, because he knows he'll find his way and also understands that he might hold her back from what she wants to do. Natalie claims to not know much about relationships, but feels like Camilla can still save hers. Vince wants to forget Camilla since he tried everything and asks Furio for advice. Furio tries to assure him that he only spent around a month in total with Camilla and that shouldn't be so hard to forget. But he still thinks Vince is lucky for having so many people who care about him. Vince asks for some time alone, and Camilla too feels broken when an electrician finds her and asks how he can help her feel better, since she reminds him of his niece. Hans is all alone at Rebecca's party and checks social media, where Natalie has finally accepted how she used to look and posted her old photos. Furio and Natalie discuss how crazy this vacation is with all the couples trying to break up. He suddenly starts hearing voices more clearly and remembers what Vince told him about senses earlier. When the waitress comes to check on their order, he makes a guess about her personality, and feels like she might have a goldfish. He gets nervous about being wrong and drops her tray in panic, but she introduces herself as Anna and suggests he can try guessing again. As Natalie watches them vibe, she leaves them alone. Camilla asks Vince to meet her at the main square at midnight. Furio is helping Anna clean up when the electrician helps Camilla by switching off all the lights in Amalfi. Irene feels anxious about the blackout and Roberto holds her hand to calm her down, which Lucio doesn't like. Camilla finds Vince and informs him about being responsible for the lights because she wants to prove to him that she trusts him. She takes him to the same place she went biking with the others, even if she knows the path is dangerous. She closes her eyes and follows Vince's lead throughout. Hans finds Natalie looking at their torn photo and asks for his half. She wonders why he's not at the party, and he explains it's because he realized what's important to him. As Camilla keeps her eyes closed, Vince guides her and asks her to listen to the sea. While Natalie finally feels comfortable getting into the sea shirtless with Hans, Camilla and Vince realize they're much happier with each other. Furio is also finally happy about being with someone great, and blows his lucky whistle. As Lucio waits alone in the car, Irene plays the recording Vince left for her. Vince recorded his conversation with Lucio about him wanting to marry her and asks Irene to understand him better. He knows she's trying to push Lucio away because she's afraid to start a new relationship, but he wants her to know she's making a mistake and how great Lucio is. Irene wakes up alone to a note from Lucio mentioning that he's going home and leaving the car for her. She asks Roberto about the next ferry out of Amalfi, but he's more interested in asking her to vacation with him and Vince. Irene wants to be clear that she doesn't think he can erase 10 years of suffering in just a week. She used to think about wanting to give him a second chance but knows how useless that is and wants to move on with her life. She kept blaming herself for him leaving for years, but when she met Lucio, she realized there's nothing wrong with her and she can still feel happy at the age of 50. But she's getting very late now and doesn't have time for a bigger speech, so Roberto offers to drop her. The ferry is about to leave, but he makes her reach on time and wishes her luck. As Lucio is about to board the ferry, Irene finds him, but no one lets her in without a ticket. Lucio notices the commotion and she comes to tell him she wants to wake up next to him every day. Happy to know how she feels, he escorts her outside the ferry in his arms. Camilla notices his dad's golden crab is missing, but there's an envelope next to it. They realize Furio sold the crab to get plane tickets to Canada for them. Camilla teaches Vince how to ride a bike and even if he's nervous, he manages to do it with her instructions. When Vince informs Irene about his trip to Canada without any idea of his return, Irene is happy for him but suddenly doesn't feel so good about her son being so far away. 